If you're a beginner to color grading, maybe you're new to Final Cut Pro 10, this is the perfect video for you. I'm gonna walk you through everything you need to know about color correction and color grading in Final Cut Pro 10. I'm gonna show you how to use these tools in Final Cut Pro to make your footage look as good as possible. You gotta just press record. Hey guys, my name is Noel Molt with Think Media and I'm excited to jump into this video. Now, there is a difference between color grading and color correction. Most people just call it color grading, which is totally fine, but we're gonna cover both of those in this video and show you how to do that to your footage. Color grading basically is adding a stylistic look to your footage to make it look cinematic or vibrant, something like that, whereas color correction is kind of fixing the white balance, fixing the exposure, the contrast, stuff like that. So we're gonna cover both of those things in this video, so let's get right into it. Now the very first thing you wanna do inside of Final Cut Pro 10 is make sure that your proxies are not on. If you go to this view tab right here, we can see that if we had proxy preferred or proxy only, then and we would want to change that to optimized original. So make sure you just hit optimized original and that is going to bring up your original files, which is going to be best for color grading. You don't want to color grade or color correct your proxy files. You want to make sure you have those original files to color grade. With that selected, I like to go to the next step and I like to open up my scopes, kind of get everything ready for color grading and I'll show you what those scopes are. If you go up to the view tab, you are going to see video scopes right here. You can also hit command seven to bring those up. And if we click that, we're going to see these uh, colors, the red, the green, the blue, and we're going to change all this, but these things are going to make it a lot easier for us to color grade and I'll show you how to use this. But instead of doing this, I actually like to change up my workspace just a little bit so that these are as big as possible. And the easiest way to do this is if you go up here to window, you will see workspaces and right here there's color and effects. If you pull this up, you are going to see this entire left side just go away and this is going to make everything everything nice and big for you, perfect for color grading and color correcting. So this is a very nice workspace that you can use if you are color grading. And if you wanna change that back, maybe you're ready to go back uh, to the edit. What you can do is go up to window, hover over workspaces, and you can go back to default. And this is gonna put it back just how you had it. So going back to my workspaces, going to color and effects, I actually don't need all four of these. So what I like to do is go up here to view, and then I'm gonna change this just to two, one on top, one on bottom. Now this is looking great. And if you want to use it like this, which is how I use it, you can go back up to window, you can go to workspaces and you can actually save this workspace. We'll just call it color grading, which I already have mine saved as color grading. But if you hit save, this is going to save this workspace for you so that you don't have to go in and mess with this every time. You can just go to window workspace. Now when you hit color grading, it is going to pull this up how you like it. Now, if you're a beginner and you're just learning how to color grade, the odds are you don't really have a flat log image, which would look something like this right here. This is a flat image or what they would call a log image. The odds are you're shooting some videos on your standard picture profile on your camera. Now that's totally fine. You can still mess with these colors and I'm gonna show you how to do that. That's why I have some footage here where it's a bit colored already. This is just the standard picture profile on the Sony ZV-1 and I have some different clips here that we're gonna look at. This one right here with my face in it, show you how to kind of color when there is some skin tones in there, as well as just some random shots here with a lot of different greens and blues, different colors to mess around with. Now, something you want to get familiar with is your color inspector. What you can do is hit the color board right here. And if you drag this onto your clip in this inspector right here, you are going to see a color board and you can open that up. And from here, you can make some adjustments, but I actually do not like to use the color board. Now, instead of doing that, this is actually a shortcut as well. You can just click on this little color inspector triangle right here and this is going to pull up uh, the same thing for you but this is actually called the color wheels now odds are if you click on that it's going to pull up your color board to change that just go into final cut pro go to preferences and right here under general we can see color correction and it's going to be set onto color board just naturally but we want to set this to color wheels with that selected we can exit out of that now you can see when you click on this triangle it's just going to pull up your color wheels right here let's start by taking a look at these four wheels and what they do and how they they can affect your image. This top wheel right here is our master wheel. So this is going to affect everything. We have shadows, midtones, and highlights, but the master is going to affect all of those, all three shadow, midtone, and highlights. Now the left side of the wheel is our saturation. You can see it's a bit more blue up here and it's a bit more faded out down here. That lets you know that it is the saturation. So as we go up, this is going to make things a lot more saturated. You can see how much more vibrant this image is. And if I 
bring it all the way down, you can see that it's going to turn to black and white. There is no saturation to these colors. Now each wheel kind of has the same layout. On the left side, you are going to have that saturation. So let's go to shadows. And if I pull those all the way down, you're going to see that the shadows are now black and white, but we still have some mid tones and highlights. A lot of these blues still have some color. Now back up here on master, the right side of the wheel is going to be our exposure. You can see up here, it's a bit brighter down here. It's darker. So as we increase the master, it's going to make everything much brighter, starting to blow out some of our image. It doesn't look the best, but as we darken it, this is going to darken our entire image, make everything a lot darker. Now, right here in the center, we can actually move this little point around, and this is going to add color into our entire shot. So if I drag this up into the magenta, it's going to make everything a bit more magenta. I can do the same if I want to pull that into the green or I want to make it warmer, make it a bit orange. You can do that by dragging these around in each of these wheels. Now, real quick, I'm just going to throw these all around. I'm going to show you how to reset these if you ever need to. So let's say you want to reset all of it. All you have to do is click on this little reset button, and that is going to bring everything back to normal for this one wheel. But let's say you don't want to bring everything back. You just want to bring back maybe this piece right here. If you double click, that is going to bring back just that property. I can do the same with the saturation by double clicking. It's going to bring it back double clicking, going to bring it back. So that's how you can kind of reset some of these values as you are going through your color grade. Like I mentioned, these are going to work the same as the master. However, this is only going to affect your shadows. This is only going to affect your highlights. This is only going to affect your midtones. And so you can mess with each of these by only affecting, you know, a specific part of your shot. After I show you what all of these do, I'm going to walk you through exactly how I color correct and color grade a shot. So stick with me. We're almost there. These are the things that you need to know before you start color correcting. Down here, we have temperature, tint, and hue. Now, this was shot on auto white balance on the Sony ZV-1, but if you mess up your white balance, this is where you could fix some of those issues by sliding these around. So this temperature, if you drag it to the right, this number is going to increase, and that is going to increase the warmth of your shot, and the tint is is going to increase in magenta as you pull it to the right. And as you pull it to the left, it is going to add green to your shot. If you pull the temperature left, it's going to be cooler and adding that blue tone to your shot. Messing with the hue is going to adjust all of your colors and kind of swing them around on your colors wheel, uh, making it look a bit funky. This is not something that I ever use, but maybe for shooting a music video or, you know, there might be an instance where you would use this. This is where you can mess with the hue. Down here under mix, I usually just leave at one, but if you want to dial it back so that it's not at 100% strength. It's kind of like the opacity of uh, this effect. You can drag this to the left and zero, you can see that there is nothing happening. And to the right, you can see this is with everything applied. I usually leave this at one and I just dial everything in exactly how I want it. But that is there. If you ever want to dial it back and forth, you can do that. If you also want to see kind of the before and after, what you can do is uncheck this box and this is going to disable it. And then if you check it again, it's going to bring it back. Now that you know what these wheels do, let's actually color correct and color grade this image to look a bit better, a bit more vibrant, maybe a bit more summery. But first we want to take a look at these scopes over here. Now these might be a bit intimidating, but I promise you it's really easy if you just take the time and understand what these are. It's going to help you so much. Right now we're just going to ignore this vector scope, which is this uh, circle up here. And we are going to kind of save that for our part two of this video, which is going to be a bit more advanced where I'm going to cover stuff like LUTs, you know, film simulations, adjustment layers, grading log images, getting correct skin tone, stuff like that is going to be in an advanced tutorial where I will use this vector scope. Once that part two advanced tutorial comes out, make sure you check that out because you're going to learn so much more, but you definitely need to watch this video first because this is going to lay down the foundations of color correcting and color grading so that you're not completely lost when it comes to the advanced tutorial. But for now, we're just going to focus on this waveform down here, which is our Luma waveform. Now, if you ever want to change these, you can click on this right here and change this from Luma. Sometimes I use the RGB overlay. Now this waveform right here is actually showing us the values in this shot. So as I move this around, you're going to see this also moves because this is showing us exactly what is on screen and it's showing us the brightness of the shot. Now on this waveform, we have some numbers. The main thing that you want to look at is this 100 number. If you go above this line, you are going to start losing information in your shot. So for example, if we 
go to our highlights and we boost these highlights, you can see that the entire graph is now moving up because it's showing us the brightness of the shot. So as I move these highlights above 100, you are going to see that the sky is starting to lose a lot of its color. It just is white now because it is over this 100 line. So you wanna try and keep things that you want to have color, things that you want to be in the shot below that 100 line. This is the same with the shadows. As I start to decrease the shadows, we are going below this zero line, and that means that we are losing color and details in the shadows. It's starting to take colors and just make them black. So typically, you want most of your colors to be above zero and below 100. As I move these midtones, you are going to see that the waveform kind of scrunches upwards, or if I move it down, it's starting to scrunch downwards, and I really use midtones for adding contrast. So let's go to this shot right here, and I'm gonna color correct and color gray this a bit, exactly how I would do this for my own video, First things first, you wanna make sure you have that clip selected and then we can start making our adjustments. Now when looking at the shot, one of the things I want to fix is how dark it is around my face because it's a bit too contrasty for me. And so first thing that I would do is go over to my midtones and on this right side, we have that exposure and I'm just going to increase this to bring some of that life back into those midtones so we can see what's going on in those shadows. Now when I did that, you can see that I actually lifted this entire thing up. So even though I was just messing with the midtones, the shadows were a bit affected as well and I still want contrast in this shot so what I'll do is I will take my shadows and I'm gonna bring those down just to the bottom of this graph to see how this looks so far that's looking pretty good I'm gonna mess with my highlights see if I want to bring those down or up but honestly where they're at is pretty good you know everything's at the top of this 100 and so far I'm happy with how this looks if I click this on and off you can see how much we really brought back into the face how much we brought back into the shot just by adjusting those midtones up and then bringing the shadows back down to keep the contrast, but also bring life to those shadows. When it comes to adding saturation, I like to use the master reel so that it affects the entire shot. So I'm just gonna increase it just a hair. Now that I'm liking how this looks, I kinda wanna give this a warm summer vibe, and so we're gonna mess with some of the colors, add a bit of warmth into the shot. First, I'm gonna start with the temperature and just kind of increase this and see what this looks like. And you can see as I increase the warmth, it gets a bit green as well. So I'm gonna grab the tint and I'm gonna bring it this way to add some uh, magenta back into this shot. Now in the highlights, I'm just gonna add some warmth to this by dragging it towards these oranges. And now my skin is getting a bit too orange. And so what I'll do is I'll go to my midtones. I'm gonna pull it in the opposite direction, adding a bit of blue to the midtones. I'm also gonna add a little bit of blue into the shadows and maybe increase my highlights even more. I'm also gonna bring my highlights down just a hair. Now this is definitely more of a stylized shot. Everything is a bit warmer, it looks very summery, very warm, and so if I click this on and off, you can see the before and after is pretty crazy, right? Look how dark this is, it looks really cool, it looks natural, but when I click this on, everything is much warmer, the shadows have been lifted, and I like the warmth that we're getting in the sky, in those greens, I think it looks really awesome. When it comes to color grading, there's no correct way to do it, it definitely is just finessing in the colors, messing with it, it takes a while to figure out, you know, where you want your colors in the shadows, the midtones, the highlights, highlights and so practice just start messing with shots there is no wrong way to do this just start messing around with it see how it looks and you'll get better over time now I'm going to show you a really cool trick that you can do here in Final Cut but first let's copy over these effects command C we're going to paste them onto this by hitting option command V now we can see that it copied everything over but it's not looking too good so I'm going to go back into my color wheels and make a few adjustments to the exposure I think it looks a little bit flat so we're going to add a little more contrast to the shot that's looking a bit better. I kind of like having the highlights a bit lower. I think it looks really cool for this shot. Okay, now that I like how this is looking, it looks very warm, very cinematic, what I'm gonna do is actually add in a new thing by clicking up this down arrow right here. We're gonna add in our hue saturation curves. Now in this video, we're just gonna take a look at these top three, the hue versus hue, the hue versus sat, and the hue versus luma. I'm gonna show you what these do and how they can really affect your image. If we click this eyedropper right here on hue versus hue, I can select any color I want, and it is going to show me what color it is right here. And as I drag this up and down, it's 
it's actually going to mess with that color specifically. So it's not going to mess with the hue on all the colors like that one little hue wheel did. This is going to mess with just that one color. So if I wanna make that blue water a bit more blue, I can drag it down like this and it's going to add in some more blues and just change the hue of what the pool originally was. I'm also gonna do this with the green. So if I click on this little green right here, there's some different colors in this tree. So like this is going to be a little bit different than say this green back here. You can see this green has a lot more blue in it, but I wanna mess with these colors right here. So as I drag these down, they can get really bizarre, really blue, and you can mess with these and kind of fine tune exactly the look that you're going for. Let's say I'm really liking this shot, but I think the blue in the pool is just a bit too saturated. I like the color, I just want it less saturated. This is what the hue versus sat is for. So if you click the eyedropper, and then select the pool color. From here, if you drag it down, you can desaturate the pool, and if you drag it up, it is just going to increase the saturation. So I'm gonna keep it right about there, and I'm gonna do the same thing with these trees because the green is a really cool green, I just do not like how saturated it is. Okay, now this is looking really cool. So if I turn this off, you can see what this looks like before, and then I turn it on. This is what it looks like after. So this is where you can get really creative and really stylize a look and color grade using this hue saturation curves is a really fun tool just to mess around with the colors and make something that is really unique. Now that I really like this look, I'm gonna copy and paste this image onto a new video. So, so far it looks pretty good, but I'm gonna show you guys actually the main reason why I use the hue saturation curves and it's typically with skin tones and kind of decreasing maybe some of the redness in the skin or if the skin is just too saturated bringing that saturation down just a little bit and I basically use this in almost every single think media video and what I do is I go into the hue versus saturation use the eyedropper I select the skin and then this allows me to really refine that saturation in the skin tones so if I want to bring it down just a hair I can and usually the redness you know on my cheeks or my nose sometimes can just get a little bit too red when I add in saturation and so I can click on my cheeks or my nose and maybe bring you know this area down a little bit you can see that the lips now have no color and so I just bring it back up until I think it has a good enough saturation but not too much this is before any of the hue saturation curves and this is after the hue saturation curves this is before the entire image and this is after click on the screen to watch another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial or you can click on the bottom screen if you want to watch our advanced part two color grading video. I'll see you guys in the next video.